It's that time of the show where we get to answer all of your burning medical questions. It's time to ask the doctors. They are getting good at that. Yes, they are. Yeah. The first question has me feeling a little warm. Let's take a look. Hey, doctors. I recently read that fevers help fight infections. The next time I get a fever, should I take fever reducers or just let it be? People always have this question. That's a really good question. It is. There's no definitive right or wrong answer here. When you're treating a fever, remember, you're treating a symptom. You're not treating the illness that caused the fever or whatever caused that fever. And I like to use the example, and the way I, I use it in my own life is, if I have a fever for whatever reason, and I've determined that it is a benign illness that doesn't require hospitalization or me to go to the ER, and if my fever is making me feel bad enough that I'm not drinking enough fluids, and I can bring my fever down with a fever-reducing medication, and I feel a little bit better so that I can sleep, exactly. eat, drink, pee, poop, then for me, it's worth it. That's, that's when I go for it. But a, a low-grade fever, I, I don't immediately well, grab for fever Well, we have to remember that a fever is, is our body's natural response. It's part of that immune response, so it's meant to be a good thing. I think you're right. I think for thousands of years, the hypothalamus, which is in your brain, sets your temperature. And the thought is that when you're sick with a bacteria or a virus, your temperature goes up because it, it boosts your natural immunity. It helps those cells fight that infection. But it's also because of those chemicals that your body is releasing in response to the infection. So when you decrease that temperature, you may not actually be doing anything that's beneficial, if, especially if you're really symptomatic. They actually did a study that was published in the New England Journal back in 2015. They looked at 700 people who were in the ICU, and they looked at early intervention with acetaminophen versus not, and they found out that in those cases, it didn't reduce the number of days those people were in the ICU compared to people who hadn't been given acetaminophen. So like you said, if it's really symptomatic, it's decreasing your ability to do anything, then it's reasonable. I think with kids it's a little different. I think anytime it's above 102 degrees with kids, the recommendation is you probably should start decreasing their temperature because they can get into brain risk. But I'll tell you my litmus test is just how high the fever is. Mm -hmm. With my kids I use 102 and I think that's what my pediatrician recommends as well. Yeah. And then how little they're consuming. If they're and looking I, really lethargic and, I think and they're that, not that holds drinking, true I'll, for adults I'll take too. It. Less than 102 Okay, you feel it, but you're not super uncomfortable. I think you hit 102, then you're like going, you know, your head's throbbing a little bit. You're, you're aware of that heat, hard to sleep. It's also why, incidentally, I have such a difficult time at times with over-the-counter medications in the sense that we go to medical school for four years, then we go through all this residency training, then you go into practice, and over those years, you see so many different patient presentations. And as an ER doctor, I've seen so many doggone fevers. And you know, in, in most cases, particularly in kids, like you said, it's, it's fairly benign, and they're just not feeling great. And a little fever reduction, they do great. Um, but it is one of those things where as a parent, you always also have to use your instincts. You try to say lower your child's fever and they're still not acting right. You know, that, that's when the algorithm, you, you throw the algorithm out the window. It's like, okay, my, what's going on here? My, my kid is not responding the way I expected. Oh, the you know, the key with kids is, is your, is your kid acting so differently than yep. they normally? Are they, are, they're just not their usual crazy, rambunctious self. Even just a little bit off, that, that's telling you there's but my, my like one that. word of caution here, and this is to both adults and certainly parents taking care of kids, make sure you give the right dosage. One of the biggest things that I've seen in the ER is, is parents don't necessarily know what dose to give their child of these fever-reducing medications, and it's very easy to underdose or overdose. In adults, it's the same thing where maybe you're taking a bunch of these different medications for your fever, cough, achy throat, and it turns out they all have acetaminophen in it, so you, by the end of the day, you've actually overdosed on it, mm -hmm. putting your liver at risk. So just, if you're going to make that choice, make sure you dose appropriately.